I'm Sonia Azad. Welcome to The Shift, a place to inspire growth, resilience, and wisdom, real connection, healthy conversation as we navigate life's changes and challenges together. Because as I like to say, we are all each other's teachers. Thanks to BTL Industries for making this podcast possible. Hair and makeup generously provided by Glam House Collective. Hi, I'm Sonia Azad. Welcome back to The Shift. We are at Renew Beauty today in North Park, and I'm here with Briston McClendon, nurse yes. practitioner. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot to talk about, really interesting topic, but I want to just ask you as a person, as a human today, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah. I love it. The weather's terrible, but <laughs> I'm inside in the air conditioning and it's, I'm feeling better about that. Optimism. This is great. <laughs> so this whole series is about aging gracefully as we're calling it, kind of shifting into the middle part of life where things start to shift in your body. Um, and we're sometimes... Out, it's in our control and sometimes it's out of our control. So it's like, okay, how do we deal with all this? Um, when people come to you by, by the time they've gotten to you, they're in a room and they're talking to you. What is their number one kind of complaint? Usually the most common complaint is fatigue, weight gain, just feeling tired and irritable is really the main, the ones I hear the most. What's the, what's the average age of someone who comes to you for help with either weight loss or weight loss options? I would say most of them are going to be in their middle age, 30s, 40s, 50s. Okay. Um, at, some people come at a change of life, like after they had a baby or they're just noticing weight creeping up year by year and they have just hit their limit and they're doing all the right things. They're exercising, they're eating right, but they just can't lose weight. Mm. So what do you say to someone then? Like, what's your solution? If you're, if you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm, I'm eating the same things I'm eating and I'm trying to exercise as, as best I can. Um, what are the like first options that you present them with? So usually I, it's a full questionnaire of, you know, question and answer. We're talking a little bit about behaviors. What are you eating? Cause sometimes people think they're eating well, but they might not actually be eating well. So we go into that and then we do a blood test to see if anything is you know, out of the norm, normal ranges and not normal ranges like your doctor. We're not comparing ourselves to sick people. We want to compare ourselves to the most optimal version of ourselves. Oh, interesting. So what kind of markers are you looking at? So I, you know, we're looking at, um, hormonal markers. We're looking at vitamin and nutrient markers. We're looking at, um, uh, insulin resistance, things that maybe you don't realize are happening because there's an optimal level for every lab that we do. So we look in depth at all these, we're looking at cardiac enzymes, we're looking at um, inflammatory markers, mm. hormone markers, and vitamins and nutrients and things like that. Thyroid is another really big one that we look at because a lot of people have a little bit of thyroid issue that's affecting their weight loss and they may not know it because the average doctor is just doing a minimal testing and we're doing a more vast testing. Okay. So the blood test is really the first thing. And depending on how that comes back, that determines your course of action. Of course. With this person. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it's not just the blood test. It's also, you know, what they're doing in their everyday life. Like what, what's making them tired? Um, how are they sleeping? There's a lot of other indicators that we can change as well that maybe don't show up in the blood test. So it's a lot about getting to know each other as well. And then looking for the blood markers, if their hormones are low or their thyroid's not working properly, how can we optimize? That. I feel like someone out there is going to be watching this and they're like, what's making me tired? Life is making me yeah. tired. Um, yeah. And I mean, we get it like, right. Like everyone is juggling a lot. Yeah. Stress is a big component for not losing weight as well. So making sure that you're deep breathing, meditating, doing whatever it is, exercising, whatever it is that makes you feel better and less stressful. I didn't even pay her to say that. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, as a yoga and meditation teacher, of course, I'm always talking about the benefits, breath work, slowing down, sleep, um, meditation, and just overall mindfulness, um, in whatever ways you like to move. Um, so when it comes to technology, like, because I feel like also right now, um, with social media, we're seeing all this, like burn this fat away or sculpt this fat away. Like, does that stuff really work? 
So it all work. It all plays a part, right? Okay. So not only do we have to diet and exercise, but sometimes we have little areas that maybe don't respond as well to what we're doing with diet and exercise, or we have little target spots that we want to target. And so that's where the technology really comes into play. And you know, the radio frequency, the M sculpt, M tones, cool sculptings, they all really help you get to your goal. Um, okay. it, with a diet and exercise, and then maybe some pharmaceuticals if we need that as well. Okay, so what, are the, what does this technology do? Because I've seen people like women use it for the backs of their arms or like things with their neck, um, you know, hip, uh, like low belly area. Mm-hmm all this kind of stuff. Yeah, so the M-Tone M is really a uh, radio frequency um, technology that basically goes on and targets and stimulates the muscle and stimulates fat loss in that area. So the radio, it just works for more spot treatment. So if you have little areas, some people have their arms have always been a problem for them or their legs or you know their abdomen. So these just kind of help spot treat those areas that maybe you can't get with diet and exercise. With like a million push-ups. A yeah, day. so it's like doing 10,000 setups for you or 10,000 and push-ups oh. or 10,000 squats all at one time. So it's it's actually a supplemental treatment to your normal diet and exercise. Okay. So we're not saying stop doing the push-ups. No. <laughs> um, and then do you, but you also don't like come in one time and then that's it. No, it's a, it's a course of treatment. So you're going to need several treatments over the course of several weeks to see results. Okay. Um, and so the Cool sculpting, does that work the same way? So cool sculpting is more about melting the fat. So it's breaking, killing the fat cell, and then it goes out through the lymph system. So you're targeting fat pockets that you might have that aren't as easily um, just spot areas that you can't get with diet and exercise. Again, so that one's actually getting rid of the fat cell, whereas the M-Tone and M-Sculpt, they're tightening and toning the body. Hmm. Um, so are they targeting the muscle? They're targeting the muscle okay. and the fat cell too. The M-Sculpt actually does um, do the radio frequency to break down the fat cell at the same time. It's just not as um, invasive, I would say. It's not invasive, but it's not as... Um, it's not breaking down as many fat cells as cool sculpting would. Okay. So you kind of like, there's a variety of treatments and you sometimes you need them all, sometimes you just need one or two. Oh, interesting. Depending, I guess, on your goals mm-hmm. and how much time does it take to get to the goal? I guess that depends and on the person. And that depends on the person too. Everything's going to be, you know, based on each individual person and how many treatments they're going to need. Do they, do you have people who come in like every day for any of these treatments? Usually it's twice a week at the most for the M sculpt and M tone. It's going to be twice a week for three weeks to come to see results and you're going to see results after the first treatment, but it builds on itself. Uh-huh. And then you're going to be more motivated because you're seeing results and tightening and toning. So then therefore you kind of work out a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. With things like cool sculpting, cause I've heard of that, you know, burns away the fat or melts away the fat, but then what happens if you stop doing it? Well, the fat, whatever fat cell is gone is, d- is done. So if once you've killed a fat cell with whether cool sculpting or Kybella deoxycholic acid, anything like that, that fat cell's dead. Now, when you're targeting a specific area, there's a lot of fat cells in that area. So it can only kill a certain um, percentage, you know, 20% after two treatments is about what you get with cool sculpting. So you, you're you not killing every fat cell. So you still might gain weight in that area because there are still some fat cells. It's different than liposuction where they're taking the majority out. Mm, okay. I've also heard, tell me if this is you know, an old wives tale. Um, like if you remove fat cells from one area, then you could gain weight in another area. Well, it is true because if it, at the end of the day, it's calories in calories out. So you, if you're, if you're going to gain weight and you have less fat cells in one area, it might, you might gain it around the, a different area. Mm-hmm. That is true. Hmm. Okay. Um, so these are interesting technologies that I've never tried myself, but I, I have heard about them for a long time. And so is there someone, you know, like who shouldn't participate in these types of technologies? Well, you, really want, you really want to be within, you know, 15 to 20 per pounds of your goal weight before you do okay. any so kind of these. Don't techn- count on this to lose a hundred pounds. Exactly. Okay. So the technologies are really when you're close, you're 15 to 20 pounds away from your goal weight. And we're just kind of helping you through that last transitional period to get it off. Or you're somebody who just has never been able to lose in that area. Okay. Spot areas. Spot treatment. All right. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Um, Another popular sort of method right now, especially is the use of semiglutides. And so I wanted to talk to you about that because you are helping people in that way, right? Yes. Semiglutide is um, very popular right now and it's really working for weight loss, especially for people who have large amounts of weight to lose or have never been able to lose weight with any other methods. It's one of the ones that's really working. Okay. 
Okay, so let's break down. I mean, people have probably heard this referred to by like specific, um, you know, brand names like Ozempic and things like that. They're all basically the same thing. They're GLP-1 inhibitors. So what they do is they work on the gut. So they slow gastric emptying so you're not as hungry. They also work on the brain so that you don't have cravings. So, and then they're also helping with people who have in some type of insulin resistance. Almost everyone has insulin resistance on some level. So it kind of helps you with all of those things. But the majority of what it does is it makes you not hungry and have no cravings. So you're going to want to eat less. So I think a lot of people are like, wait, it's going to suppress my appetite. This is great. So I want it, right? Like they think of it as a diet pill. What's the problem with that? So the truth is that you can't just take the medication and eat less. You have to actually go on a healthy diet and exercise routine to lose the weight that you need to lose, or you're just going to gain it right back. Um, but learning how to eat and how to exercise. And most people on semaglutide are losing, you know, one to two pounds a week. So it's a slow process. But if you, you can't just eat fattening food and eat less of it and then lose weight because the, first of all, the medication, you'll get sick if you do that. Mm-hmm. Um, It's a really specific diet and exercise program along with it. Break down how this works. Sub-Q injection. So usually, yeah, a little shot in the belly. Um, So just like a a patient with diabetes. Exactly. Okay. So you take home your own shots, you inject yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what happens? So first of all, we start with blood work because we always want to make sure that you're healthy before we start any kind of new program. Um, We're checking your, what your insulin levels are doing, what your blood sugar has been on a three month basis. We're checking some labs, making sure there's no thyroid issues. That could be the culprit of the, uh, why we need, why you're gaining weight um, or why you're having difficulty losing weight, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we do that to check for everything, make sure there's no history of um, cancer in the thyroid because we don't, we don't want to use that product if there was. Um, so that's the first step. And then the second step is we're going to weigh you. We're going to give you a basic composition of how much you should be eating on a daily basis in order to lose that two pounds a day. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give you a caloric restriction, tell you how much calories you should eat. And then you basic will teach you how to do the injection. You take it home and you're doing it weekly. The medication is titrated um, on a four week, every week, um, on a four week basis mm-hmm. so that you don't become um, used to it. Mm-hmm. And we do that based on... Um, side effects usually, and if you're losing weight. Mm -hmm. Um, Who would you say, outside of the people with a thyroid issue, like who should not consider doing this? Um, Anyone with a history of um, thyroid neoplasias um, or um, anyone who has a history of pancreatitis or anyone with a kidney disease, those people should never take this or anyone that's a type one diabetic. Okay. And what about age ranges? Is there like age a- Age doesn't really come into play. I mean, you want to, we don't treat anybody under the age of 18, but, um, you know, I would have them see their family care physician for that if they were over the age of, under the age of 18. But yeah. for the most part, and their age isn't an issue. The controversial part of this, you know, some people saying, well, this is, hey, this is a medication to be used for diabetics. Mm-hmm. Well, I do think it needs to be um, overseen by a, a physician or nurse practitioner or someone who actually understands the medication medication and the problems that it can cause Mm -hmm. so that the, um, whoever's taking the medication understands the risks associated, especially if there's not much weight to lose because the medication is generally supposed to be used for somebody who has, um, comorbidity. So hypertension, um, high cholesterol, Mm -hmm. other issues where it's very important for them to lose weight for their health. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course, you know, in the, in the med spa arena, we, you know, everyone wants to be the best version of themselves. So we can use medication for people who maybe don't have those comorbidities, but it just needs to be monitored. Yeah. Very closely very monitored. Closely. Yeah. Um, and I, is this something you have to, like, let's say you start doing it, you, do you have to do it for the rest of your life? No, 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 no. Um, this medication, you can, you want to, depending on how long you've been on it, you might want to titrate down off of the medication, but it can be used for short term as well, but it's FDA approved for long term use. Mm-hmm. Um, how many people would you say you've kind of helped along this way. Oh my gosh. Okay. Your eyes got wide. That means a lot of people, a lot of people are doing this. A lot of people. Yes. And so what is, what, what kind of transformations are you seeing? So I, most people, like I said, are losing about two pounds a week. I've seen some people who have been on it for six months to a year and they've lost 35, 45 pounds. So Mm -hmm. people who need to lose a lot of weight, we're seeing some really great results. Mm -hmm. Um, The cost of this medication is 
really, it's pretty high. It is. So, um, I, I, and I spoke with a few physicians who also mm. prescribe mm-hmm. this for people who intend to lose weight. So, um, that was my way of also mm-hmm. doing my due diligence when it came to talking about this with some <laughs> formality. Um, you know, some of these physicians were like, look, this is basically like a rich person's drug mm-hmm. because, you know, if you think about, tw- is it $1,200 or something like that for, I don't know if it's one syringe. The $1,200 is almost just for the first like 10 weeks. And then depending on you, the dose changes depending on how much weight you have to lose, how sensitive your insulin resistance is. Everyone is very different on how much medication they need to lose weight. So we start obviously at the lowest dose and we titrate up so it can get very expensive depending on what dose you need to take and how long you need to be on it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've seen people lose up to 40 pounds and then mm-hmm. what are they able to do in that period of time, mm-hmm. you know, in, in their life? I just, I just imagine someone who's lost 40 pounds feeling so much better about themselves. Oh, they do. I mean, the transformation and the way they feel is phenomenal, the, the way they look. And then we're a one-stop shop here so we can do everything. You know, we're helping with their skin. We're helping with tighten and tone the body, you know, helping them um, and then maintain the weight after they lose it because sometimes they need, you know, other wellness. Um, yeah, support. Support, yeah. yes. Um, so do you recommend taking the semi-glutide and then maybe doing the cool sculpting or the M sculpting. And, you know, is there a certain order to all of this? It all works together. So yes, depending on how much weight they have to lose, we want them to be within, you know, 15 to 20 pounds of their goal weight. So we might start with some glutide and then we might move into the M sculpt or cool sculpting, depending on what their goals are. That's really interesting. Um, What's the most common misconception that people have around all this stuff? Um, I would say the most common misconception is that you can just take it just to lose a couple of pounds and they don't really understand the side effects. And, you know, people who maybe don't necessarily need to lose a lot of weight aren't going to really give up the things you need to do in order to take the medication. So you really can't drink alcohol with this medication. You really can't eat high fatty foods. You can't eat um, a lot of sugar. Those kind of things will make you feel not well, they'll make you have side effects. So that I think is a big misconception because they're like, oh, or my friend lost 20 pounds in two weeks, which never happens. You know, on Instagram, I feel like they're pushing all of these quick weight loss. They're, they're claiming they're losing this much, 20 pounds in three weeks, which I, I have not seen that. Yeah. Yeah, which is dangerous anyway. And I think, um, you know, it's, you know, while we're talking about this, we're also um, talking about it with, you know, the emphasis of this like shift into middle life. So that's why I started this entire conversation with why people are holding on to that extra weight. So this is not intended as a remedy for a teenager or a 22 year old who might have a history of eating disorders um, and you know is is really struggling with something uh, visual mm-hmm. about him or herself. It's like a tricky topic. So thank you for educating thank us. You. And um, we really appreciate your time and thank your expertise. You. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us for this episode of The Shift. I'm Sonia Azad. We'll see you next time. This podcast is sponsored by BTL, the makers of M-Sculpt, M-Tone, m and beyond. For 25 years, BTL Industries has impacted the lives of hundreds of thousands of patients. A key global manufacturer of medical and aesthetic equipment, BTL operates in over 70 countries with an impressive team of 400 engineers. The leading providers of non-invasive treatments, they continue to innovate and find ways to improve the rapidly expanding medical field. And don't forget about our friends at Glam House Collective. Let's get glam.